This is going to be a study on sports in light of the Bible. I'm going to start out by saying I'm not against playing sports. And the Bible says bodily exercise profiteth little in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 8. So it does profit a little. And there is nothing wrong with playing a sport. The problem with sports is that people are exalting athletes above God and spending all their time on sports and they're not doing things that pertain to God and the Bible. Men has, men have always exalted sinful men as gods or above God. Acts 12.21 says, And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, set upon his throne and made an oration unto them, and the people gave a shout, saying, it is the voice of a God, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. So Herod was killed after people were calling him a God, and he didn't deny it. And then in Acts 28, 6 it says, Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen, or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Here the barbarous people claim Paul is a god because the snake bite didn't harm him. And then in the book of Revelation, the apostle John falls down to worship an angel. And the angel denies the worship. And the angel said in Revelation 22, 9, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. So even the angels would deny worship if they're not a fallen angel. And Second Peter 2, 11 says, Whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. So angels are greater in power and might, but still won't accept worship. But these professional athletes are worshipped and seen as gods by millions of people, even though they are less in power and might. And the devil wants worship and wants to take away worship from the true God. It says in Isaiah fourteen thirteen, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. The devil gets worship and satisfaction by you worshiping something other than the true God. He wants you to worship LeBron James. He wants you to worship Michael Jordan or Stephen Curry. He wants you to worship college football. He wants you to worship anything other than God. And by you worshiping something else, you're giving the devil glory and worship. But God himself clearly says in Isaiah 44, 8, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are my, even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. And he makes it clear in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And Paul makes it clear you're not serving the living and true God if you are worshiping idols. In 1 Thessalonians 1, 1.9 it says, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had into you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And then in 1 John 5.21 it says, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. A lot of these NBA stars are seen as gods. LeBron James is referred to as the chosen one. When the Bible gives Jesus Christ that title. Isaiah 42 1 says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So the King James Bible calls Jesus Christ elect. And where it says mine elect, that means chosen. Elect means chosen. So, Jesus Christ is the chosen one, not LeBron James. LeBron James also has the nickname King James, which the only Bible in the English language which isn't corrupt is called the King James Bible. All the other versions of the Bible in English are corrupt, and they change major doctrine about Jesus Christ. They are satanic Bibles. 
And for some reason, they gave LeBron James the nickname King James. So people are lifting him up above the words of God. When LeBron James came back to Cleveland Cavaliers for the 2014-15 season, they gave him a huge coming home celebration. And millions of people, and I'm sure even many Christians, were more excited about LeBron coming home than they were excited for Jesus Christ to come and get them at the rapture. And Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. I doubt these people were looking for Jesus Christ. And by exalting simple, sinful man above God and caring more about this sinful world, they are missing out on a crown of righteousness. 2 Timothy Chapter 4 and verse 8 says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto them, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. And the NBA has what they call the big threes, which is like a group of three superstar players on the same team. And people know more about this these big threes than they know about the Godhead. Do you know what the Godhead is? Which many people refer to as the Trinity. The Godhead is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are one in three and three in one. God, it, God isn't three gods. He is a triune being. Just like man has a body, soul, and spirit, God has a body, soul, and spirit. The body being Jesus Christ, the soul being God the Father, and the Spirit being the Holy Ghost. But people know more about the big threes in NBA history than they know about the Godhead. A lot of Christians nowadays probably don't even know what the Godhead is, but they know about the big threes like LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh, or Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, or Dennis Rodman or any other big three group that was put together through signing and trades and whatever else. And people will exalt these groups over the Godhead. They do this by knowing more about these players than they do about the God who created the world. And 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. This Godhead was present during the creation. God said, let us make man in our image, showing the Godhead was present with, was present at the creation. And people, it's, it's blasphemy how they'll exalt these regular sinful men over God. They'll put sports before God. They know about sports more than they know about the Godhead. And can't even define what the Godhead is. And it's really sad. The Bible mentions the Godhead in three places. In Acts 17.29 it says, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And Romans 1.20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Colossians 2, nine says, For in him, referring to Jesus Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. People will pay thousands and thousands of dollars on these athletes' sneakers, especially if they have worn and sweated in them, which is nasty. And they would kiss the feet of these athletes just like a Catholic would kiss on the Pope's feet, which is also nasty. Did you know that Jesus said this about John the Baptist in Matthew eleven eleven? He said, Verily I say unto you, Among them there are born of, that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. But John the Baptist said this about Jesus in Mark 1, 7. He said, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Jesus said, John the Baptist, he said about John the Baptist that born of women there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. 
But then John the Baptist said he's not worthy to stoop down and unloose the latchet on Jesus Christ's shoes. So do you think these basketball players are worthy? Do you think these professional athletes, sneakers are worth that much money and their careers are worth that much praise? They aren't worthy to unloose the latchet on Jesus Christ's shoes. It seems like each time one of these athletes gets a ring or a trophy, they rank up in how much worship people will give them, with Michael Jordan leading the way. But the Bible says, Moth and rust doth corrupt, and thieves can break through and steal. And Michael Jordan had one of his rings stolen. Matthew 6.19 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. If you will quit worrying about setting up for yourself treasures on this earth and set your affection on things above, then you can get gold, precious stones, and pearls at the judgment seat of Christ. If you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and suffer for Him down here, you'll get treasures when you get up there. The thing is, these people are not just fans. I'm not going to say you should be a fan of Jesus Christ. You should be a follower of Jesus Christ. Fans are people who like someone as long as they are successful or as long as they are on their team. A, f a few years back when LeBron said, I'm taking my talents to South Beach and he went to Miami Heat, thousands of Cleveland fans were burning his jersey but then welcomed him back with open arms. Fans are wishy-washy. One minute they are for you, the next minute they are against you. So you shouldn't just be a fan of Jesus Christ, you should be a follower of Jesus Christ. When things are going good in your life and when things are going bad, you should stay following Jesus Christ. And the NBA will hype these men up as gods. They want men who people will look up to and worship so that they can make money. And the Bible lets us know about the love of money. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The NBA doesn't care about God in the Bible, and even when a player seems to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, it is always watered down. When I looked up Stephen Curry's shoe on the internet, it says, I can do all things. But the rest of the verse is left off, which says, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I don't know if the NBA won't let him put the name of Christ on his shoe or if he left it off voluntarily but it seems they will always water down things when it comes to Jesus Christ in the Bible. I appreciate what he may be trying to do, but, but trying to stick with Jesus Christ and be popular in the world just doesn't mix. If you're truly following the Bible, people will hate you. John 15, 18 says, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. I'm not against Stephen Curry. I'm not doubting his sincerity or salvation. I think it's great. He praised God for his MVP award. I'm just saying that things that are popular with the world are pretty much always not popular with God. God is not pleased with the NBA. I've seen numerous clips where LeBron thanks the Lord Jesus Christ, which is great, but the next minute he will be flashing up the pyramids and the 666 hand signs and he'll do this before just about every game and that's weird it seems like he is trying to deceive people while he is deceived himself second timothy 3 13 says but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived one minute he is saying jesus christ is the only one we can bank on and then he is flashing up satanic hand signs before games and cussing up a storm at his championship celebration. No one is sinless, but if you're going to claim to be a born-again Christian in front of millions of people, then you shouldn't act like a devil in front of millions of people right after giving that testimony. I mean, that destroys your testimony. Kobe Bryant and LeBron both have been said to be the second coming of Jordan. Michael Jordan is seen as the god of basketball, and sports commentators love to take Bible references and use them on professional athletes. They will call up-and-coming stars the second coming of Jordan. 
And the Bible talks about the second coming of Jesus Christ. He has already came once and he is coming back again to take over. Revelation 17, 14 says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. People only care about the pleasures this world has to offer. This world is in love with entertainment and will pay big money to watch their favorite player. The Game 7 of the NBA Finals were selling tickets for like $50,000. $50,000 to come to an enormous temple to worship their false god. These huge stadiums are nothing but temples to worship your idols in. I'm not saying everyone who watches sports or the NBA are idol worshippers, but there are millions of people who are and means of people exalting sinful men above an almighty God. Means of people have idolized Michael Jordan and LeBron James and desire to be like them. There was even a catchy phrase back when Michael Jordan played. It was, if I could be like Mike, referring to Michael Jordan. And people would rather be like sinful man just because he's good at bouncing a ball than they would want to be like the savior of the whole world shouldn't you be striving to follow the lord jesus christ and be like him not michael jordan or lebron did you know that you can hope and pray and practice your heart out playing basketball and never be like either one of them but all you have to do to be like jesus christ is believe on him and his precious blood to save your soul and then first john 3 2 says beloved now are we the sons of god and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So you will be like Jesus Christ if you'll get saved. You'll never be like Michael Jordan or LeBron or any of these other athletes. And even if you do end up as good as they are, then your body is still going to grow old, and you're going to die, and you're going to go back to the dust and be just another name nobody cares about. And LeBron is already said to be up in years even though he is only like 32. So you're going to have, you may have a your 15 minutes of fame in this life, but what is that to eternity? People desire to be like these false idols so much that they will spend hours playing my player mode on NBA 2K. Where they can create their own superstar and put their self in the NBA they want that lifestyle. Deep down they seek that worship that these players get. And the closest they can get to that life is through video games. They covet that life and career. They get addicted to these games because they are living that life vicariously through the game characters. It's really sick if you think about it. While doing this they waste precious time that they will never get back. And Ephesians 5.16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Colossians 4.5 says, Walk in wisdom for them that are without redeeming the time. God doesn't want us sitting around idle, playing video games, and spending hours watching games on TV. All, all these players can th thank the man upstairs at the end of each game. But do you really think God cares who wins these stupid NBA games? It's really sad how people know all, all of these athletes' jersey numbers and field goal percentage or the year they were drafted and the coach of every team, but they can't name five books of the Bible or one of the disciples. They have never heard of Nahum or Habakkuk or Zephaniah or Malachi. They know the Philadelphia 76ers bench warmers, but don't even know what a minor prophet is or couldn't name one of the major prophets or one of the gospels, or even know what the first book in the Bible is. And if you don't know these things, you haven't been redeeming the time. God tells us in the Bible what he wants us to do with his word. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. And so you need to be hiding the words of God in your heart. And then Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to hear the words of God as well, because in Romans 10.17 it says, Then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You need to mark it. You need to mark the Bible. Jeremiah 23.18 says, For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? 
You need to put the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word above all. Psalms 138 and verse 2 says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise the name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. America is a nation in decline. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. We are living in a country that is in support of sodomy. And even the NBA supports sodomy and stands up for sodomites' rights. The people in this country are in love with satisfying the flesh and all they think about is feeding their face and entertainment. Sodom was destroyed because their sin was pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. A sign of a nation in decline is that it is full of sodomites and we aren't supposed to hate them and we shouldn't pray for them to die like some of these guys are doing but we aren't supposed to support them either. We should, we should pray for them, and homosexuals can be saved. Anyone can be. You come to the Lord Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on Him. You don't quit your sins to be saved. You get saved, and then God helps you quit your sin. But there is a wicked higher power that you can't see that is deceiving you and making you think everything is okay. They do this with free handouts free food, and shoving entertainment and pleasure in your face. Look up the phrase bread and circuses. America seems to be going in the same direction as the Roman Empire. Not only was it full of sodomites, but they were in love with entertainment and sports. The biggest form of entertainment was watching the gladiators fight in coliseums. These were attended by poor and rich people, and as the gladiators fought, vicious cries and curses could be heard from the audience. One contest after another was staged in the course of a single day. And if the ground got soaked with blood, it was just covered with more sand and the performance would go on. The drive for personal pleasure had become very intense, even to the point of obsession. And at the, at the very end of it, sports had become more exciting and brutal. And one of the reasons the Roman Empire fell was because they were putting so much money into these sporting events and the people were so in love with, with fulfilling the lusts of their flesh and with entertainment. And the same as sports in America has become a god and it is wicked. I don't believe for a second that God is happy with the sports organizations. The NBA has to keep bringing up superstars to keep people entertained. And they'll make these players seem better than they actually are. Sports are nothing but distractions. Instead of watching them on TV and playing them on video games, why couldn't you just go out and play them yourself physically with friends and with your kids? I don't believe that God is helping Stephen Curry or LeBron be successful in the NBA any more than he is helping Adele or Katy Perry sell CDs. Sure, Stephen Curry may be sincere, and I appreciate him trying to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ, if he is sincere, but I don't think God is helping them be successful in the NBA because it is a wicked organization that supports sodomy and loves money more than they love God. Curry may be reaching a few people, and if he is, then it is in a watered-down, worldly, Lecrae type of way, where they shack up with the world and try to have a foot on the Lord's side while they're still trying to live in the world. The best thing you can do, if you're not saved, is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and His precious blood to save you. If you're a Christian and have made sports your God, then you should confess your sin to God and get back in fellowship. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, God in the flesh, died on the cross as a sinless sacrifice to pay your sin debt. He was buried and rose again the third day. 
He did this for us even though we were sinners. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then Romans 3, 9, What then are we better than they? No, and no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Galatians 3.22 says, But the scriptures hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Romans 3.10 and 11 says, As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. We can only get righteousness by placing our faith on Jesus Christ. Romans 3.22-23 through 23 says, Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. To be saved you come to God as a guilty sinner, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and His precious blood. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The Bible is plain on how to be saved and have eternal life. Acts 16.31 says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house.